episode of the Libertarian Movie Club. Today we're going to talk about Star Wars, my favorite one, Return of the Jedi, with my friend Pro-Life equals Anti-War. How you doing, man? Oh, I'm good. Oh, How's it awesome. going there? So, Star Wars. What's your uh, Star Wars story? When the first time you saw it, you know, <laughs> what got you into it? What's the, what's the story here? <clears throat> All right. Well, Star Wars is one of those movies that actually the first two came out before I was born. So I pretty much was alive um, with them in the, you know, in the culture. And so I definitely grew up. I think, you know, the first two were definitely on TV when I was a kid like the original, 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 uh, without all the updates and the special effects that they added in the 90s. Um, so, and like, yeah, some people always kind of like to make fun of the uh, or Return of the Jedi because of the Ewoks, but I guess I have a special place in my heart because, you know, I was quite young when that movie came out. Um, even, I think it came out in 83, so I would have been three. So definitely... You know, whenever I first saw it, I was still a kid and still enjoyed those vicious little cannibalistic um, <laughs> teddy bears, whatever you want to call them. Um, Space so Vietnam. People, Space yeah, Vietnamese. Yeah, basically. So some people, yeah, always kind of rip on the Ewoks, but I have no, I have no bad feelings about them, I guess. I love the Ewoks. I love the, you know, the beginning at Jabba's Palace. Like some people think that was pointless, but... It's a great action scene to start out. It shows you how great Luke is, you know, becoming a Jedi. Mm -hmm. And obviously you have to finish what was started in, in uh, Empire. So you have mm -hmm. to get Han out of there. Um, yeah. And just, it kind of starts, starts to show how everyone's working together, uh, you know, as a team. You know, you got Lando, he's now accepted. He's not a jerk for all the things that he caused mm -hmm. or allowed to happen. Um, yeah, so... Episode six is one of my favorites because Luke Skywalker is my favorite fictional character of all time. I think he's one of the best written, best characters out there. He is the example. Like he is our modern day Hercules. You know, when you think mm -hmm. of the hero's journey, people go yeah. to go Luke Skywalker. That's how influential this character was. Star Wars is modern day mythology, and Luke yeah. is Hercules. He is yeah. the guy. And seeing him come into his own as a full Jedi Knight with the with the robes and the green lightsaber and just yeah. kicking ass, it was <laughs> it was awesome. I love it. This is why I hate the sequel so much because they ruined yeah. Luke. And it's right. like he took the coolest character. You got one movie of him being really awesome, and then just anyway. Um, now this the, the themes of Episode Six are. It's somewhere to say, you know, Luke like Luke finally is accepting of Vader as his dad, you know, his acceptance of it, the attempt to, to bring him back to the light. When he when he goes and he just like goes up to Vader, you know, when Vader's looking for him and isn't like trying to hide, running his car, and he just walks up there and talks to him calmly. I like, guess one of my favorite scenes in all Star Wars is that dialogue right there. Yeah. Because it's just something about like trying to pull him back to the light. It is just it's very moving and it's when you have to watch the prequels, you kind of see an Anakin in the Clone Wars. You kind of attach to this yeah. character more than just the villain. He's Anakin Skywalker. And seeing the hero fall to that level and then his son trying to bring him back, it's really a wonderful scene. Like it's it gets better with every time because every time they do something with the prequels, you're like, I have more of Anakin, more of Vader, more of that scene being better. Yeah. <clears throat> what about you? You got a favorite yeah. scene in the movie? Oh. Favorite scene. Um, I'm one of those guys who's like all the scenes. Um, <laughs> I guess, um, yeah. I mean, the. Uh, I just watched the whole thing today, so it's like everything is really fresh. Um, I don't know. Han, Han Solo has always been my favorite guy, favorite character, mm. um, and he's really great at, um, you know, coming up with a plan, uh, flying by the seat of his pants, and. Uh, so I love that, like when he's trying to get into the um, the shield generator and they, he's like, I guess I'll hotwire the door. And then he messes with the wires and then it closes mm -hmm. another door and he's <laughs> like, uh, crap. And then finally the, the big, uh, what is ATST, right? The small yep. one, he comes up and he's like, uh-oh. And then he realizes it's Chewie. Um, so he's like, get down here. And then he's like, wait. 
Um, and actually, I noticed it's kind of it's funny because it looks like him on the speaker, like he's inside that walker talking to them, saying, "You guys got to get send us out some backup." But you know, less than a minute later, he's down on the ground as they run mm. out the door. You know, and I'm like, "How did he move that fast?" <laughs> um, mm. But you know, I don't know if that's a mistake or not. But it was pretty funny to. That final battle, and the in um, the people who went with him to Endor, you could see one of the uh, Webbers is an older dude with a big white beard. You know, you see him. They yeah. when they put Rex uh, from the Clone Wars and Star Wars Webbers, they drew him to look like that guy. So you uh, they could say that dude's Rex from the Clone Wars, uh-huh. which is just kind of cool to think about. That, that's Rex from the Clone Wars dealing with yeah. the final battle of the uh, Empire. Like it is a really. It's one of those things they did post. They obviously had to do post to the times and stuff, everything. But really, that's what that's one of the best things about Star Wars, in my opinion, is that yeah. they have such this big lore and big word that when they do something new, they find a way to tie in the old and make the old more exciting. You know, yeah. that's why I really, really enjoy Episode Six. You can catch things like that. Yeah, and you could hear. I could hear Boba Fett. Um, his voice is the guy from the new movies. And the the Mandalorian Boba Fett, the yeah. same actor, so that's cool. Like, Ta- uh, I cannot pronounce his name. Ta- <laughs> it's gonna bug me now, but he's he's awesome. He is the voice of, I mean, Boba Fett, the clones. He just is phenomenal. And then since mm-hmm. they brought him back to play Boba Fett, he also play any of the clones. So my hope is that we have yeah. to see we see Wex, <laughs> so the Mandalorian, yeah. and he plays oh, yeah. Wex again because he can. All the clones came from him, so he could accurately play these characters. Right. Mm. One of the themes of episode uh, six that I found interesting was Ben Kenobi's truth from a certain point of view. Yeah, talking to Luke. Mm-hmm. It's the, uh, one of the themes of every every podcast I've done on Star Wars has been the failure of the Jedi to actually do their job. Yeah, the will get to the Jedi in episodes one, two, three. The uh, no more qualms against like using basically slave labor to the clones who are designed not to always follow orders. Mm-hmm. Um, and that really everything that happens is a failure of actually teaching Anakin how to be a good person. Yeah. And you really see that Obi Wan and Yoda have, I think they learned from their mistake. They, they seem better off. They still mm-hmm. aren't perfect because they're keeping secrets they shouldn't be keeping. But they are. Much better teachers at this point, and I wonder why like, the failure of their failure of the cis rising up, the empire taking over the republic, all the Jedi had died, order of 66 mm-hmm. must have been a very big lesson for these, take these characters to learn. And then the teach Luke still, I mean, he could have been that good at saving it because when Luke's a full blown Jedi, he wanted the order to end too, you know, so it, it, they could have done much better, but there had been you could see points where they're like, okay, they learned something here. You know, it, it picks in post again with the prequels, whereas like they could. That's just my prequels. I don't want to complain about the prequels being bad, but I really think the prequels aren't that bad, and they make episodes four, five, and six better, if only by them being not great. Yeah, you know? it's like the sequels yeah. are so bad, the prequels are enjoyable now. Where the same thing applies for the Wizard of the Trilogy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I rewatched uh, all all six of the first ones. Um, but I have no real interest in watching the sequels. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I, I got to watch them, I think, today for a podcast I'm doing next weekend. Oh, yeah. I'm not looking for I haven't seen episode eight since it was in Cedars. I don't uh, even own it. I'm going to have to get on Disney oh, Plus yeah. and watch it. I am not mm-hmm. excited. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be bad. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> let's talk about that final <laughs> battle scene between Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker. Oh, yeah. There's some, mo- there's some great moments there. I mean, when uh, Emperor Palpatine is like, strike me down to do it until the dark side will be complete. And Luke doesn't even hes- really hesitate. It's like, yeah. take one for the team. Yeah. Boom. And just goes to strike him down. Like, that is a that is a scene of a Jedi just being like, mm, maybe it's okay. <laughs> just... Yeah. Mm. No, so yeah. In that I mean, scene. Oh, go ahead. Well, well, I just, I was thinking a little bit about the. Um, you know, are are the Jedi supposed to be pacifists? Because you know they don't do a very good job sometimes, and um, 
you know, Luke, like in that scene, you know, he's like, um, you want me to do this. So, and then that's, you know, obviously that's aggression. Um, I mean, you could argue if he's being held hostage, it's kind of not aggression, but. Um, well, if it's space, not, it's space hit low. I mean. Yeah. You kind of argue. Um, yeah, maybe, take it one, maybe it's okay um, to, you know, kill space hit low. Yeah, that's true. Um, right. Yeah. So it's like. But I, I guess um, I was thinking about there were a couple of things that the emperor said that end up not being true. Um, so it seems like, you know, he can see maybe he can say I, I've foreseen it and it may or may not be true that he has foreseen it. But mm -hmm. as Yoda says, the future is always kind of in flux. Mm -hmm. So even if he did think he saw it, um, it may not actually come true. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's yeah, a good way to deceive uh, Luke. Yeah. No, that, whole, that whole fight scene with Beto is just uh, when Luke's hiding from Beto when he has the saddles cast on his face, half in light, half in yeah. dark. It shows Lucas actually knew what symbolism was. You, you wouldn't yeah. know he knew what that was <laughs> after watching the prequels. But yeah. so he knows he knows something about filmmaking. I mean, he made Star Wars. Yeah. Mm. Well, he didn't direct that one, he only directed the first that's one. Right. Who, who was the director for the sixth one again? Do you remember? Because I forget. Oh, I forget too. Um, yeah. I, don't I know, know the fifth or sixth one, but not Lucas himself, but. Yeah, that's what I remember. He didn't direct it. I don't know who did, but um, better director than Lucas, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, <sighs> so, said I. Um, so I was thinking no, I, about the. Oh, well, just um, it kind of. Um, makes you wonder, like, going back to the beginning of the movie um, on Jabba's sail barge, um, it's like they, <clears throat> Luke turned that gun towards the deck of the boat and fired it and destroyed the boat. Um, even though Leia was there and she could have said, you know what, I already killed him. I already mm -hmm. killed uh, Jabba. You don't have to murder all the slaves <laughs> mm -hmm. and all the people on the ship. Um, mm -hmm. And apparently it didn't kill Bib Fortuna because he's there at the end of uh, the last season of Mandalorian. Yeah. Spoiler. Sorry if it's mm -hmm. a spoiler, but yeah, spoiler. Point, if you haven't watched yeah. Mandalorian at this point, I'm as with you. <laughs> yeah. Like you, there's no reason to not watch Mandalorian by this point. Yeah. Mm. But yeah. So I don't know. I just, I was thinking about like when I, but when I was a kid, I'm, I'm pretty sure I watched it on TV and they didn't show um, Leia strangling Jabba, right? I don't mm. either for time or for violence, they cut that out. Um, mm. So watching it on the video, it's like, oh yeah, that was, he, mm. I remember like many, many years after the first time I watched it, I was like, what's that? Why is she strangling him? I didn't know that. So I think I mm. must have missed it because I think I watched it like a hundred times at home from the recording from the TV. Mm. And so I, I knew it by heart what was on t the tv version and then later mm -hmm. i um watched the you know vhs or something and i was like oh she strangled him so <clears throat> anyway so he was already dead and you know i don't know it's i was just thinking like did he have to kill everybody on that boat because <laughs> like r2d2 r2d2 was definitely you know a slave like conscripted to be on there as a mm -hmm. waiter and we know all the band members they probably had no choice. Yeah. Um, so I don't know. Just like again, mm. uh, sort of thing, casual, to think about. casual murder of um, mm. bystanders. I guess it happens. Mm. <laughs> it happens. <sighs> Do you ever read yeah. any of the extended law books, extended universe books, uh, or? Uh, I guess I read some of the like. There was a trilogy about Han Solo. Mm. Um, and there was another book and that one was like prequel I guess because it was like about his early life mm. and then there was another book that was called The Bounty Hunters and it was about each of the bounty hunters in uh, Empire mm. um, so that was I remember thinking that was a cool story I don't remember any details <laughs> mm -hmm. um, mm. and I don't I guess they're probably not canon anymore anyway um, no sadly all the good all the good books are not canon it's yeah. sad. It's, it's a lot of it's good just, ones. And now it's yeah. And it's funny because like 
yeah, instead of making those into seven, eight, and nine, they just you yeah. know, took a big old dump on those and made whatever they made. I mean, um, they, they ruined Luke. Yeah, that's why I can't forget for any signing moment in that movie. It, it, you're watching, and you're like, oh, that's that's a good thing right there. And immediately you're just like, that they ruined Luke. I don't care. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it's like someone comes over and kicks your dog. They can bring you brownies the next day, but they kicked your dog. You, you yeah. don't want brownies from these people. And that is what this is. That's what this is at this point. Like every time you're anything good, like Mandalorian and Watson, I'm like, this is awesome. You guys ruined yeah. Luke Skywalker. Yeah. It's just it's it's hard to enjoy anything they do. After that yeah. treatment of my favorite character. Yeah. Mm. Do you... How do I put this? I can't remember who wrote it, but there's some online video or some edit someone did or like fake script they wrote of if Luke died, Leia go and take it on Vader kind of thing, you know? Or uh, they swapped out the roles of like Ben Kenobi uh, protected Leia and Leia went uh, on the whole journey kind of thing. Uh, That'd be a very interesting uh, plot point, and I'd make, I mean, I would, I, I think that'd be interesting. But I think Leia's character, she slowly loses relevance, in my opinion. You know, mm-hmm. like I feel like she was episode four focal point, five yeah. and poor point. By six, she's a side character. I feel like after so, yeah. after they rescue Han Solo, when they she gets out of the costumes he had, she becomes yeah. a prop and a slave outfit. And yeah. from there, she kind of just he kills Jabba, which is cool. But after that, she becomes really just like a secondary character or a bouncing board for Luke to complain off of. Yeah. I guess <clears throat> the only important thing she did was she was the kind of bridge to the Ewoks. Yep. Um, that's, that's really they, it. They might have been able to get through with the whole uh, C3P as a god, yeah. but it really worked better that they already had this nice woman that they. She likes them and she likes mm-hmm. Ewoks, so they'll be friends. Like that worked better than the uh yeah, the C2PO as a god thing. Yeah. yeah. I think like it's weird because Leia goes from being a secondary character, sad sadly, because I think she's awesome written character, one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. And they make her as a focal point for episodes uh, seven, eight, and nine, and they don't understand yeah. the character. You know, he writes in with Organa, and it's like you don't understand the character when you write her. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, in the extended books, you know, she uh, has twins, they both become Jedi, one falls to the dark side, she gets an oiled lightsaber. There's some uh-huh. awesome stories that are told involving her character, and it's like they, uh, anyway. Yoda's. Um, let's talk about Yoda for a bit. Let's talk about Yoda's um, death scene. One of my favorite, my other favorite character. Mm. Yoda's. Yoda works better as a puppet. I'm gonna say it. Puppet Yoda's oh, much yeah. better than CGI Yoda. Like yeah, puppet Yoda's. Oh, Yoda's it. I mean, everything about Yoda in the originals is better. I don't know what it is, but you know, even you know, especially this last week or so when I watched all six movies, it's like, I guess I should watch the prequels again after watching him, you know, because I can understand it better. Mm-hmm. But I remembered it being much better in the four, five, and, or five and six. Um, and when I watched the prequels, I was like, yeah, it's definitely, I don't know what, uh, if they, the writers didn't understand his speech pattern. Um, Cause they just basically just, put the verb at the end you know of every sentence and like they didn't give it any thought and sometimes he does that and sometimes he doesn't do that in the original ones um and i think that um sometimes i feel like the maybe i get i don't understand exactly what the phrase fan service means maybe because i feel like you know sometimes they do something to make the fans happy and sometimes it's fits the story i guess that's the difference but i just wonder whether it's fan service or not that they did that with yoda because i feel like it'd be better if he had spoken normally in the prequels and then after being stuck on that planet by himself for what 30 years or Mm -hmm. 20 some years that's why he was speaking like a crazy person because he Mm -hmm. forgot how to speak 
you know, that would make much more sense than he's just always talked like that. Yeah. What I want to know is if when Baby Yoda starts talking, it's even talking like that too, yeah. or is Yoda the screw with everybody talking like that? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's like my, because we really know nothing about Yoda's, um, even, in the, even in the extended lore, Lucas had a rule when they were making the Clone uh, Wars. The Lucas uh, said, I have one rule. Leave Yoda blank. But in the book, said, leave Yoda blank. Like He did not uh, want anyone doing anything in Yoda's home world or Yoda's people. He wanted Yoda to be made a mystery. And uh, uh, John, John Favreau had to go get express. Like, he had to go, he had to go get those like, hey, man, I want his baby Yoda for this. Can uh, I make some Yoda lore? And he had to be like, he's like I can do it without you, but I want your blessing. And Lucas was like, yeah, go uh, ahead. Like, it was uh, a... It was a big say because Lucas had been very clear. I think I don't know if he planned later himself to write a book or something, but he wanted everyone just to avoid writing more about Yoda's planet uh-huh. and Yoda's lore, which is yeah. interesting. Because like we, there's, a, there's so much like every every thing in Star Wars. Like uh, there's that joke in Episode Four when they go to the ball on Mos Eisley. Every character has a too long has like a, has like an 18 paragraph long Wikipedia page. Oh yeah, you know. So there's a lot of lore in Star Wars for every character. Yeah. And Yoda is blank almost because they have nothing yeah. about his own wood. Yeah. By design. And so it's, it makes you wonder like what was his was his plan to leave a mystery? Was that like he what, what yeah. he wanted, or what was the plan there? I'm, and that's kind of the sequel we all want. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the people we all want. Like, who cares about Han Solo's fuzzy dice? Like, I want to see what was Yoda doing. Yeah. And I I I think I think I heard it correctly. He's He's 900 years old when he dies, right? 900 and, um, and something. Yeah, so he said in, must have been when he first met Luke, he said, I've been training Jedi for 800 years. So I think that's kind of what they said with Grogu. Like he's, it took a, over 100 years for Yoda to start being a teacher. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of makes sense along with, the, you know, how Grogu is 50. Yeah. Um, apparently. Um, so that's why, you know, it took him a long time to become an, a, 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 an expert and, a, mm-hmm. you know, a Jedi. Do you think we're going to see, do you think if we will see baby Yoda again, uh, and the Mandalorian, or do you think they're going to basically just be done with his character? Cause I, I see they're going to bring him back later when he's like, two seasons are going to go by, no baby Yoda. They're going to bring him back. He's going to have his like Jedi training. He can talk a little bit, you know, he may, he might not have a lightsaber, but he might. But I think they're going to bring him back as like a teenage, young adult Yoda type character. Uh, which I think would be very, very, very awesome. But I don't know if they're going to like... Given the aging patterns of Yoda, we don't know, you know? Like he's 50-something yeah. years old, but he's still like a toddler. And yeah. so like if they want to bring him back and they got to do a Mandalorian time zone, they only have so many years in between episode 6 and episode 7 to actually write right. the story. So it's like, are they going to really have a chance to show Yoda being more than a baby you know yeah i don't know i hope they do it'll be hard it'll be hard to hard to you know hard to guess that um i wonder um i watched this one theory channel they were kind of saying that it seems like uh the disney is going to go with yoda uh boba fett and they're done with uh Oh, no, I can't remember his name. The Mandalorian. Mm. Gene died. Whatever. Um, yeah. But they got um, a lot of new stuff. They got the Boba Fett show. They got the number one Kenobi show. They got the Mandalorian yeah. show. And I think they have an Ahsoka show coming out. I think so, yeah. Or, it's going to be... Yeah, maybe... Yeah. Well, because like, no. they were saying that the Mandalorian was a kind of soft pilot for mm. Mandalorian and the Ahsoka and... Uh, mm. it, it, it is all jumping off from that one show, it looks like. Yeah, so who knows if Mandalorian will be back? That'd be nice, but I guess I, I like they... the show. Hmm? Oh, sorry, go ahead. Uh, I was gonna say, I, I want to know what they're gonna do with the whole uh dog sable at this point, you know, because he technically yeah. is the Mandalore, and it's like he, right. he's got some issues out with Katana, and they didn't really yeah. elaborate on it. It's kind of just it's, it kind of ends, you know, like Luke Thiago yeah. shows up, and it's awesome, yeah, that, and that's it just gonna have to be ends, yeah, that's gonna have to be solved, I guess. Um, um, I was gonna say no. Uh, the Ahsoka show. My hope for the Ahsoka TV show is they uh, it's her and Sabine going to get Ezra from Star Wars Rebels. Uh, that, that's <laughs> my hope because I think out of all the trash that is in Star Wars Rebels, the characters of Ezra and Kanan are interesting. And seeing Ezra, who's still alive, you know, he's a 
Jedi Knight Master like Luke Skywalker alive somewhere out there. That's a uh-huh. that's a plot point to understand. And then the Obi Wan Kenobi show they're gonna make. I heard Qui Gon's gonna be in it, and it's like oh, yeah. that's like Qui Gon's <laughs> Force Ghost talking to Obi Wan about oh, the yeah. failures of the Jedi Order and why they have to <laughs> adapt. Like that's gonna be a story right there. Yeah, you know I am fun. I'm oh and Ewan McGregor's back and. They've already uh-huh. said uh, Hayden Christensen is back to play Darth Vader, and so oh, it's yeah. like it's like the prequel cast coming in with new stuff. Like it's just gonna be, <laughs> oh, am I excited for that one, man? I yeah. cannot wait. Yeah, hmm. yeah. I just feel like you have to be measured in your expectations because we know what Disney seems to do. <laughs> yeah, um, it's like well, it's so weird because like um, I hear uh. Kathleen, uh, Kathleen Kennedy, whatever her name is, she's out. I heard. Oh, really? Like, I heard she's like on the way out, or she's having less uh, influence over things. And John Favreau is really stepping up. And mm-hmm. I, I trust John Favreau and Dave Filoni. I trust with Star Wars. You know, mm-hmm. Dave Filoni did the Clone Wars, Rebels, Mandalorian. You know, he did. He's in, when he's involved. I mean, he he was involved in Avatar: The Last Airbender. Look how good that turned oh. out. <laughs> you know, Dave Filoni is this the guy for making fictional movies and TV shows. And so as long as his name is attached to it, I have faith it's going to be good. Because he has not yet... Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, what's hilarious. You ever hear the story of Dave Filoni, how he got the job for the Clone Wars? Uh-uh. So he was walking on Avatar on last year, Bendel, and he got a call from Lucas's office saying, hey, I wanted to come sit down for an interview to be the guy that makes make this new Star Wars thing. And so he goes and sits down. It's like, okay, I'll probably get like five minutes talking to this one executive and it'd be out the door and be nothing. Nope, George Lucas is in the room. <laughs> They talk uh, for like an hour and a half on the Star Wars before the interview uh, even starts. <laughs> uh, and he's like, he walks in like, that was the coolest thing ever. I'm going to go see episode three and brag to all my friends about, you know, I got to meet George Lucas. And then he got the uh, job. But he was like, I, what? <laughs> uh, you know, like this guy was nerding out. And it's, uh, you see it too. This guy loves Star Wars. And you see it when he makes anything, it's like, no, he really, no one does he love this lore. He knows the lore. You know, there's nothing contradictory in it. It's, it works within the universe. That's why the Clone Wars TV shows are better than, than most of the movies. <laughs> yeah. You know, they... Uh. Okay, so I got to ask yeah. you a uh, few more questions. Okay. Lightsaber color. What color would... <laughs> what's your favorite? What, if you were Jedi or Sis, what lightsaber color would you have? Oh. Well, um, I guess I've always been partial to purple. Mm-hmm. And that's Samuel Jackson's color. So I'd probably go with that. Get in, get the light table in gray with Ezekiel or something, something, uh, whatever. Yeah, the, uh, whatever. Is, I cannot remember what the script was from the uh, Hope Fix It. Oh, oh yeah. my gosh, it's gonna bug me now. <laughs> I, I, I can quote the script, so I just can't quote what it's from. <laughs> yeah, it's like Ezekiel uh, 25 something, I think. Or yeah, it's on, it's on a uh, Sam, uh, Nick Fury's tombstone in the uh, Captain America oh. and the Sozo. Oh, really. I love how that one, that is really cool how that one that one line was so impactful on it. It was like that when he when the Seven Ducks is in Star Wars, the lightsaber has it on it. When he's in oh. uh when he's in Marvel, they have it on his tombstone. Like <laughs> it's just it sets a cool little Easter egg for every sec. You know, yeah. I, I absolutely love it. For me, I go green. You know, I'm part of oh. the, the councilors, uh the uh that kind of type, you know, the green lightsaber. So oh, they're nice. Okay. Well, I think we're running out of time, sadly. Oh, yeah, I got 12 seconds left in my record, my timer. <laughs> oh, man, this has been a lot of fun. Thanks so much for coming on. Where can people, where can people uh, find you at? Um, yeah, I'm just on Twitter, mostly pro-life equals anti-war. Uh, I do mostly retweets, but sometimes I have an original thought to share. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I guess I like to, I guess other people tweet better and more often than me so i don't feel the need to make my own thoughts into tweets so same um, here honestly like i'll, I'll sing with <laughs> tweets and i'm like yeah that's probably a midwit tweet i'm not gonna bother and i'll treat yeah. it then i'll see someone tweet the exact same thing get loads of likes and i'm like dang it yeah. <laughs> like not knowing if you're a midwit and not wanting to treat is just like i'm pretty sure this is a good idea but i can't tell yet and someone else takes it and you're yeah. like that was a good idea dang it <laughs> Anyway, well, everybody, this has been another episode of the Libertarian Movie Club talking about Return of the Jedi. Join us next time. We're going to talk about, I believe, the sequels, and we're going to have an episode. This is very exciting. Have you announced this? Have it on a guy to talk Star Wars to talk about the necessity of violence 
And the next episode, this was a, a pacifist talking about Star Wars. And so we're going to have back to back necessity of violence and pacifist episode. So everyone subscribe and get excited for those. Um, anyway, everyone have a good night and uh, may the force be with you.